Okay, so uh, I'm actually gonna have to put this battery box together on the ground here, uh, on the floor, because uh, once this thing's assembled, it's gonna be, you know, probably about 100 kilos. I certainly won't be able to lift it off the workbench down here. Uh, even with two people, it's, it's pretty difficult. So I thought I would just build it on the, on, on the floor here. Um, I have constructed a very temporary uh, trolley here for it to sit on. Uh, so I can at least move it around the workshop a little bit. Uh, they do actually sell a um, dedicated trolley uh, for it. So I, on the next uh, battery case order, which I'm going to do as soon as I've completed this, um, I will order uh, one or two, I think I'll order a couple of trolleys because uh, we're going to have multiple uh, batteries. So what I've done is obviously I've just ordered one of these boxes. I want to test it all out, try it out, see how well it goes together, make sure everything works. If it works well, I'll order three more. Um, and obviously I'll order a couple of, couple of trolleys. So what you can actually do with these battery boxes is you can stack them uh, two, two high, uh, two or three high, I, I believe. Um, I think I'll probably do two to maybe, maybe three uh, batteries per trolley, um, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. And like I said, I've just temporarily constructed um, this temporary trolley just so I can uh, move the thing around in here um, whilst uh, we're, we're still in the testing process. Okay, so I've got the instructions here. Um, the first step it says is we need to put on um, the feet. So I've got this little box full of uh, bits and pieces here. Um, so it does come with four little uh, feet here. Okay. Only one of which has a screw in it, so that's a, a good start. <laughs> so I need to find three other screws, which are the same. Okay, so the idea is with these feet is there's, there are some holes in the top of this uh, box. So um, the feet will actually go into these holes if you have another battery um, sitting on top um, and that kind of stops it sliding around. So this is why we put feet on. So. Okay, so that's step one complete. I've got the four legs in. Um, so it comes with these uh, handles. So we just need to got a load of these black little black screws. Um, I thought those, those were for the case, but there seems to be a huge amount of them. So let's just use these screws for now. Nothing worse when you're building something um, like this, like a flat pack piece of furniture, and you get like 95% of the way through. Uh, this is usually what happens to me, and then it's like the final step, you just attach part, you know, <laughs> Z, Z1 to Z2, and then you realize the screw you've got is too small, and you use the wrong screw on like step number two. Um, so then you've got to like take the whole thing apart, uh, so that you use the right screws. Um, so I'm just being really cautious that doesn't happen here. Um, okay. This, by the way, um, I saw this on YouTube. I saw the, uh, like a, a video of the Chinese manufacturer putting this case together. It, it was actually in Chinese, the video. Um, and they were using a little handheld electric screwdriver. Now, you know, obviously I've got my, my you know, full-size electric screwdriver, my, you know, my, my drill. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, you know, that's a bit of an overkill to use for this, but these little handheld electric screwdrivers are fantastic when you've got to put together something like this that's got, you know, sort of maybe 30, 40 screws in it. Uh, just saves a lot of time. So uh, yeah, definitely recommend this. And I, I got it because I'm gonna be building multiple of these batteries. So I'm literally gonna be putting in hundreds of, hundreds of screws 
Um, so yeah, just that's why I got this. Okay, so those are the side handles. Let's put the other ones on. Actually, I didn't need to, I could have just spun the, the whole thing around. There we go. <laughs> I forgot we were on a trolley. Before I put the feet on, this was actually sliding around on this uh, MDF base, but now I've got the rubber feet on, it's not moving around so much, so that's good. There we go. Screws out, there we go. This is good timing actually because it's, um, what day is it today? So today's Saturday and on Wednesday um, the inverter, the charge controller, all the fuses, the um, bus bars, basically all the Victron equipment, all the stuff for hooking everything up to the solar power panels is arriving on Wednesday. So uh, super excited for that to arrive. Um, so be good to have the battery completed before that arrives. Um, now I don't have a plant room to put it all in yet because uh, the builder is starting in about a week's time. We've got to put a concrete floor in the plant room. Uh, I've got to dry line it, put a damp roof course in. I'm, I'm not doing, doing that. I might be helping the builder, builder out a little bit, but decided to get some help for that so I can concentrate on uh, this part of the build. Um, so until that uh, plant room is actually finished, uh, we're going to be installing everything in here, uh, just as a kind of R&D, just to get everything um, working, so we can understand how it all works, get all the programming done, um, learn about it, and then once the plant room is finished, um, we will then install everything in the plant room. So uh, yeah, and disassemble it from here. Here we go. Last couple of screws. Dun, dun. Done! <laughs> okay, so let's get this. <clears throat> yeah, let me turn this around so you can see the front. I think you can see that. There we go. So there's nothing actually installed yet. This is just an empty box. I do have a BMS um, on the counter. Uh, so first of all, the thing we're going to do is remove the case, lid. Ta -da! <laughs> so you can see here it's... Um, very nicely laid out. I'm not quite sure how well you can see that. There we go. So we've got the PCBs here. Um, so I'm just going to remove these two. There we go. So, what's the first job? So, uh, let's see. So we've done step one. Step two, test the cells. Yes, we've done all of that. We've tested the cells. We've top balanced everything best as we can anyway. What we need to do is um, install these plastic uh, sheets inside the metal battery box. We want to basically isolate everything so that it's... Um, so the battery cells aren't sitting against metal, they're sitting against plastic. So let's get that installed. Okay, so quite simple really. Hmm. 
I thought these would have a plastic, sticky back plastic side, or maybe they do. No, there's no sticky, nothing sticky on these. No, there's no, no plastic peel off, so these literally just sit, sit in here until we put the cells in. Okay. Be careful that I don't fall over. And then we've got one there, one there, and then we've got two end pieces. I believe. Fallen over already. I don't know why we've got loads more. Uh, I'm not quite sure because we've actually got sticky pads which we're going to put on the actual battery cells themselves. Okay, so next job is we need to take off this front panel here. So uh, let's just make sure this is in the right direction. Okay, that's the uh, compression plate for uh, the batteries. So I'll just put that down here. Okay, so let's just move those out of the way. Yeah, so they have provided a little diagram there, a tiny little diagram showing the exact orientation um, of the batteries. Uh, so what I did was I just took a photo of it so I could zoom <laughs> into it, uh, I guess my magnifying glass, uh, so I can make sure I've got the correct orientation for the battery cells. So, um, the first one we're going to put in here. Oh my. Okay, let's see how well that fits. So we're going to have a minus there. Okay, um, so what it is actually saying is, let me just get all this stuff over here. So what they want us to do is to stick on some of this tape on each cell and put a plastic separator uh, between each cell. So it's kind of like double, uh, kind of like protection. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. There we go. Um, so I'm gonna get on with doing that. <laughs> um, uh, well, let's just get the first one done and then we can move to a time lapse, I think. So. Let's see how easy it is to peel these off. Make sure it's still in the right direction. Yes. Yeah. I think these are a, a one shot deal. Once you stuck it on, you're not going to get it off again. Or well, not easily anyway. There we go. And let's get that one in its new home and then we've got a separator there fantastic okay so i think it's now time for a time lapse
uh, this last cell, having problem getting it to fit, to be honest. It's a pretty tight fit to get that in. Wow. It's funny because my cells aren't swollen, but... Whoa, that's hard. Let's get that in. I guess in the compression plate there we'll take up the slack. Wow. See, having the EV, EVA tape um, and the plastic sheeting as well takes up a lot of the space. So, oh dear. I don't see how I can get that in. Maybe I wasn't meant to put a foam pad on the last one. I don't, I don't know. Seems to be putting a lot of pressure on this uh, this post here. Same problem. So this time I think what I will do is I will try and use this epoxy board to help it slide in. It's a seriously tight fit. Wow. That is not good. Oh. Maybe I should put that down to the bottom. Damn, I don't like compressing the cell on one side like that. <sighs> Just to get it in there. Damn, that feels too tight. <sighs> That's ripping the EVA tape off the other cells. Wow. Oh. All right, Houston, I think we have a problem. <laughs> this won't go in anymore and I don't particularly want to really force it. Oh. Okay, so I've had to go slightly off piste here. Um, I literally could not fit these batteries in the box. They physically wouldn't fit uh, with the EVA squishy foam tape and also a plastic separator. Um, these plastic separators are quite thick. And then when you combine, um, you know, combine 16 of these or rather eight of these each side along with eight EVA tapes, that's quite a lot of thickness. Um, and I literally could not get the last battery cell in there without damaging it. It was starting to rip, well, it ripped the EVA tape on one of the cells. Um, and it would have actually damaged the battery if I'd forced it to go in. So uh, the only way I've managed to get these to fit properly is by removing all of these thick plastic separators. Um, however, there is still the EVA tape between each cell. So there is a separator between each cell. Um, and I have ensured that there is one of these plastic, whoops, plastic separators at the front and also the back. Um, what I'm guessing will happen over time is that the EVA tape is quite squishy. So once I compress the cells, uh, that EVA tape over the course of like, you know, a few weeks will naturally compress. Uh, so what I might do at a later date is uh, take the battery apart again when that EVA tape has squished down a little bit and then maybe I can fit in 
uh, these plastic separators between all of the cells. Um, I think this will be something I will take up with the uh, manufacturer of the case. I mean, I'm guessing what they will say is, oh, you should have bought the cells from us. Um, I didn't buy the cells from them because I was just, these are you know, recommended to me, these particular cells, by another YouTube channel called The Off-Grid Garage. And there is a big problem with uh, Chinese manufacturers selling bad quality cells. And these particular cells came highly recommended. So I wanted to make sure that I was getting the cells from you know, a reputable uh, uh, manufacturer and someone who's got really good feedback. And the people who sold me these cells have got really good feedback. And so far, these cells have been excellent. So um, yeah, so that's why I got the cells from that company. But they're all a pretty standard size. So. Um, yeah, not quite sure what's going on there. Okay, so like I said, I managed to get the cells in. It was very difficult to get the cell out. I didn't actually film it because it's a really hot day today and I was starting to get really hot and bothered, I have to be honest. Starting to sweat a lot and I just turned the camera off. Um, wish I hadn't done that. Um, one big problem I had was I'd actually forced these last two cells in uh, when, we had, when I had all the plastic separators in. Um, and then I realized there was absolutely no way I would, this is the um, compression plate which you screw on the front and it slightly compresses the cells, really just to make sure they don't kind of move around or anything. Um, and I realized that there was no way I was gonna get this on um, with uh, the way it was, you know, the, the screws weren't long enough, so it wasn't, wasn't gonna work. So I then realized I was gonna have to remove these front two cells so I could remove these plastic separators. Um, but then I was thinking, well, I don't wanna just jam a screwdriver in underneath the cells and start levering it up because, you know, I might puncture a cell or something. That's kinda of, kind of dangerous. Um, so I went to the kitchen and I got myself a wooden spatula and this started to break. So what I actually did was I shoved a uh, plastic separator underneath the cell and then I levered up um, this front cell and I was able then to pull them out. So yeah, a little bit of a procedure there. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do now is screw on uh, this compression plate um, and uh, hopefully I can get that on. So uh, let's uh, see uh, how easily the compression plate actually fits. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can get this screwed in. It's still... I still have to push it to get it to go in. There we go. So this isn't going to put a huge amount of force on the batteries. And some people, some you know, some some people do talk about compressing, um, compressing, compressing cells. Um, that is a thing. Um, and some people say you know it it, it uh, increases the life of the cell if you compress them. Um, personally, the only reason I think that you should compress cells is because what actually happens with cells is they will expand and they will expand slightly as they age. Um, and by compressing them, we can minimize that expanding. And we don't want them to expand too much because if they expand too much, it will put force on the bus bars between uh, the cells. Now, as far as actually extending the life of the battery, yes, it may extend the life slightly of the batteries, but we're kind of like in a weird time with lithium iron phosphate cells, or with rather, with, let me just bring my camera back up. So we're in this kind of uh, time, at the weird time with uh, battery cell technology. Batteries are moving at a tremendous rate. Uh, technology is moving so fast when it comes to battery technology. And it kind of makes me laugh when I hear people saying, oh, you know, if, if you compress your cells, uh, instead of them lasting, you know, 10 years, they'll last 12 years, or you'll get 20 years life out of your batteries rather than 15 years life. It's kind of irrelevant because in 10 years time, a battery that I'm building right here, you'll probably be able to pick up for like $100 or $150. Uh, that is kind of like the way it's going and it'll probably be half the size as well. Um, it's the kind of reality. It's a bit like, you know, in, in, imagine in the early 80s, you were worried that your, you know, your current computer would only last 15 years rather than 20 years. 
it's irrelevant because in 15 years it would be like obsolete. Um, you know, so that's that's the way I see it with with battery technology as it is at the moment. Like I said, this battery I'm building now, um, you know, this this cost this is going to cost me, I think rough. This is a 15 kilowatt hour battery. And I think in all, it's probably going to cost me two and a half thousand dollars to put the whole thing together. Um, and, you know, like I said, probably in 10 years time, you'll be able to get that for well under five hundred dollars, uh, maybe even a hundred dollars. Uh, that's just the way it's going right now uh, because of technology. So, um, yeah, so I don't I don't think there's um, uh, much uh, any any point in uh, compressing cells. Anyway, let's get back to uh putting the um, compression plate on. Uh, like I said, the only reason I'm compressing these cells is because that's what the kit tells me to do. And it's gonna stop uh, the cells moving around in the box and mean that the bus bars uh, won't put any stress on those bus bars. So I'm just gonna get the last couple of screws in here before I put any real torque on them. Okay. I believe there's a thread at the bottom there, if I can find it. Oh, yeah, there we go. So you don't want to just torque down like one screw all the way because you'll put uneven um, pressure uh, on the plate. Uh, that's with anything, if you're screwing anything up, you should tighten them one by one, usually in a diagonal fashion. There we go. Otherwise you can bend things. So let me just... There we go. Now one to go. Right, there we go. All done. Step one of the battery build complete.